The sermon text for this morning comes from the book of John, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. And just as Moses lifted up the servant in the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. I hope you listened intently as Leland read that because he gave the sermon. Thank you. Great job. Please pray with me. <clears throat> May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Two men were seated on a plane. The one turned to the other and asked, so what's your occupation? The man replied, I'm a minister. Oh, the first man said, I don't believe in all that religious stuff. That's for kids. I mean, it all, all boils down to a nursery rhyme, doesn't it? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Well, the minister just kind of chuckled along with it and then asked the man what he did for a living. Well, I'm an astronomer, said the first man. Oh, that stuff, the minister thought, said, I thought that was just for kids. I mean, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Yeah, well, no matter where we go, no matter what we do, we will find skeptics. Did man really walk on the moon? Are we really in global warming, or is that some just some fad? Were there really weapons of mass destruction? Are we still looking for weapons? Most of us have been skeptical at one time or another. It's not wrong to question. It's not wrong to doubt. But there are times that we are asked to put down our questions, put aside our doubts, and just believe. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. We hear that over and over again. But what does it mean to believe in Jesus? Now the word believe, used in our passage this morning in John, comes from the Greek root, patho. Used here, believe in its broadest sense means to persuade, to convince, or to rely on by inward certainty. Simply put, 
To believe in Jesus means to trust and to obey him. God's reason for creating us is a positive one. God's attitude is not that of suspicion or hatred, but of love. God is not seeking an excuse to condemn us. Rather, God is endeavoring to save us. Listen again to Christ's words from the Gospel of John, this time from the message by Eugene Peterson. Jesus begins, This is how much God loved the world. He gave his Son, his one and only Son, and this is why, so that no one need be destroyed. By believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. Over the years, there have been many stories about barrels and acrobats and publicity stunts connected with Niagara Falls. One of the more famous acrobats, a Frenchman named Blondin, pulled an amazing publicity stunt. One day, Blondin's manager was standing on the Canadian side of the gorge, doing his best to attract a crowd of people to watch this acrobat perform. Blondin had just done a series of stunts on the high wire that included walking on his hands, doing cartwheels, and using a unicycle. His feats were really quite spectacular. The Frenchman then picked up a wheelbarrow, got onto the rope that stretched across Niagara Falls, and turned to his manager. In front of this entire crowd that had gathered and had seen him do some of these stunts, he said to his manager, do you believe that I can push this wheelbarrow across the rope to the other side? His manager answered, yes, I do. Blondin said, get in the wheelbarrow. <laughs> Sometimes there is a profound difference between saying you believe and just believing. John 3.16 is about God's actions and only secondarily a statement about the consequences of those actions for human beings. The central theme in this verse is that God loves the world. It is this unconditional love available to everyone that is life-giving and life-changing. And we accept that love by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. When we lay down our questions and our doubts, that is, when we trust and obey Jesus Christ, that's when faith believe, begins. And when we have faith in the Lord, we have our salvation. Doubts, concerns, cares, they're all human, and it's okay to have them. But to believe in Jesus is to trust and obey. Jesus explains, God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. He came to help, to put the world right again. Anyone who trusts in him is acquitted. Anyone who refuses to trust in him has long since been under the death sentence without knowing it. And why? Because of that person's failure to believe in the one-of-a-kind Son of God when introduced to him. Our passage this morning speaks about both salvation and judgment. We are assured that if we believe in Jesus, we will have a whole and lasting life. We become imperishable, free from all condemnation, approved by God. But Jesus also says that those who do not believe are under the death sentence without knowing it. Without Jesus, we will perish. Years ago, 
a young man quarreled with his father and left home, though he continued to keep in touch with his mother. He struggled with this, but he was determined to hold on and weigh it out and keep it going until his father succumbed. But as Christmas approached, he wanted desperately to come home for the holidays. But by this time, he was afraid that his father would not allow him to do so. Again, he was in touch with his mother, and his mother urged him to come. But the young man felt he could not, unless he knew that his father had forgiven him for what he had done. Just days before Christmas, his mother wrote to say that she would talk with his father. If he had forgiven his son, the mother would tie a white rag on the tree alongside the railroad tracks near their home. He would be able to see the sign before the train reached the station. If there was a white rag, if forgiveness was not, if there was no white rag, if forgiveness was not forthcoming, he should just remain on the train. So the young man started for home. As the train drew near his house, he was so nervous, he said to his friend who was sitting next to him, I can't bear to look. Please look out the window for me. I'll describe the tree to you, and you tell me whether there is a rag on it or not. So his friend watched out the window. After a bit, the friend said, oh yes, I can see the tree. The son asked, is there a white rag tied to it? For a moment, the friend did not say anything. Then he turned, in a very gentle voice said, there is a white rag tied to every branch in the tree. Doesn't this story exemplify what Jesus is saying here in our passage from John's Gospel? God forgives us. Jesus Christ removes our condemnation and makes it possible for us to come freely and openly home to him. Friends, now is the time to come. Now is the time to believe in Jesus. Think for a moment about the impact of Christ's message. John 3.16 is an anchor for Christians for our faith in what we believe. It's been raised in sporting events. You've seen it, John 3.16. It's been stuck on car bumpers, and it's been memorized by many confirmation classes. Now, listen again for Christ's message to us in this one verse. For God so loved the world. These words define God. God is love, and this love motivates the action in the rest of the verse. That he gave. God is giving something to the world, to us, because of that love that was talked about in the first part. His only son. These three words tell us that the human Jesus of Nazareth is also the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity. So that everyone, that is you, and that is me, God's saving grace is open to all of God's people. Everyone. Who believes? Being saved from our sins is based on belief or faith rather than based on human works. In him, our belief needs to be in Jesus, God's son and our savior. May not perish. This implies the fate of those who do not believe. This is the doctrine of hell but may have eternal life. And this states the reward of those who believe. This 
is the doctrine of heaven. Powerful words we all know, but it leads us totally and completely enveloped in God's love. So today, remember Blondin and his stunt over Niagara Falls. Taking wheelbarrow in hand, he asked his manager, in front of a crowd of people, do you believe I can push this across Niagara Falls? And the manager replied, sure I do. And Blondin said, get in the wheelbarrow. Remember the young fellow who had a falling out with his dad, doubting if he would be accepted by his father, if he would be able to go home again. He waited to see the sign of forgiveness found in a white rag tied to a tree. And instead of one white rag, there was a white rag hanging from every limb on that tree. So the question begs to be asked, where are you in your relationship with Jesus? Will you get in the wheelbarrow? Will you look for the white rag that is tied to the tree? Will you notice that there is a white rag on every limb as a sign, as an answer for you? Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Jesus also said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The gift of salvation found in Jesus Christ is for everyone who believes in him. We need to set down our questions, push aside our doubts, and just believe. Questions are good, doubts are real, but don't let them take you to a place where you don't want to be. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to get into that wheelbarrow. We need to see those rags on the tree. We need to trust and obey Jesus Christ, for that is where belief starts. We are told, everyone, everyone who believes will not die, but will have life, life abundant, life eternal. Friends, hear and believe, and remember, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, you do love the world, and you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to walk, to teach, to heal, to die, to rise again to sit at your side interceding for us. Great God, may we remember the power of Jesus Christ. For it is in his name that we pray. Amen.